Item number three, report from Cody Erickson on the status of the homestead. And you might introduce your guests this evening, Cody. Thank you for inviting us to talk about this. Um, Candace, the CEO, is here, and so is Kelly, the public information officer in the marketing department. So we're here this evening just to provide an update on what's gone on. It's been six months now since we've entered into the management services agreement between Share Medical Center and the Utility Authority. Um, since then, our census has risen sharply and fallen a little bit, unfortunately, also. Uh, some of that is due, to, well, all of that is due to just natural attrition. But we actually um, started out at 76.92%. And that was an adjusted um, census. We didn't, we're not taking out rooms that are being utilized for other purposes unless there's an actual person living in it. Um, we did reach a peak of 84.62% in December. And unfortunately, we lost two residents to nursing facilities. Uh, one of the college professors that was living there moved to a more permanent home in the community. And two of the oil field professionals who were living here were relocated to other towns. So we haven't lost anybody due to unhappiness or anything like that. It's just natural attrition that's happened. We've also gained several people. So we've actually got a net gain right now of zero. So we're back to where we started. But um, as I reported last, last month in the uh, hospital board meeting, what I said we needed was a winter storm. And apparently I was in hindsight right because our phone's been ringing off the wall this week. So we sent out uh, 10 information packets. We have three people pretty committed to putting down a deposit and moving in. Uh, two of those are pretty definite, definitely going to happen. Uh, that'll bring our census to about 81% again, which is, we want to keep it above 80%. Uh, right now, we're, we're right at that line of, of a break even on the cash flow side of things. Uh, probably seeing the paper, we're showing a little bit of a profit on paper. That doesn't account for uh, some overhead that we have through the hospital. Uh, our employees' benefit packages come out of the hospital side of things. So that's why some of that is showing up as a profit also. Um, also some of the salaries, portions of the salaries for administration that help out. Um, there are currently 12 apartments available. We have two studios, one bedrooms, we have five of those, two, two bedrooms, and we have four, and Super Twos, we have one. Um, so anyway, we do have some space there, and like I said, we do have a lot of inquiries, so we're hoping to, hoping to fill those up. I think an attainable and a doable goal is to stay above 85%, to maintain above 85%. That'll, that will keep us cash flowing properly, at least on this side of it. Certainly we'd like to be 100%, and that will always be our goal, but at least an attainable goal is to stay above 85%. Um, staffing, we're currently fully staffed. That was something we struggled with a lot in the first couple of months. Um, as everybody else has too, I think, in the, in the process, but we did finally reach full staff and we've, we've been able to maintain our staff all the way through. Um, marketing and programs, like I mentioned, I sent out 10 information packets to the community. There's just some people that um, have expressed interest about the homestead themselves or have been referred, you know, we've been referred to them by other people. Uh, we sent out the packet offering some special pricing for a tryout of the homestead. We've got an apartment set up where they can move in and just bring their clothes. We've got furniture and everything is furnished for them. Um, we've, we've kind of put together a two week trial period for them if they want to come in. And if they're not sure they want, would like the homestead, they don't have to make any significant commitment to that. They don't have to move furniture or sell the house, anything like that to decide they like it. We're confident enough that when they come, they will like it. So um, our main goal is, is and continues to be showing the community exactly what the homestead is. And that is independent living. We're not assisted living. We're not a retire or we're not a nursing home. We're not a medical facility, but we do provide services that help people maintain their independence and maintain their health also as a result of that. So um, the more people we can get through the doors, the better we are at showing them what the homestead is for. And about two years ago, well, we're in our second year with it. Mrs. Moore uh, from Washington School piloted a program at the homestead called Greats and Grands. It's an intergenerational program where the four-year-old students uh, from Washington School in the afternoon session come to the homestead twice a month, have classes, our residents come in and help them with that, and they do activities with them, things like that. It just really, really helps our residents. They really look forward to those days that the students come. The students also actually equally or more so look forward to coming out and seeing their friends or their grandparents, they call them. So, and often they do refer to our residents as the grandmas and grandpas. So, but that's kind of what the point of that program was. 
And that actually has gained statewide recognition from Leading Age Oklahoma, and we actually received this year a statewide award of the 2013 Excellence in Community Outreach Award from Leading Age. And that's a pretty prestigious honor because we'll, we're the only ones in the state of Oklahoma that have received that this year. So I'll be traveling to Oklahoma City in March to accept that award for the homestead. And again, that, that is a collaborative effort with most of the burden being you know, on the back of Mrs. Boer. She's done a lot of work on that with her idea. She's implemented it. We've just kind of, you know, come in and help wherever we needed to and provided the residents to her to help with that. So, but it is a mutually beneficial program that has gained the homestead some recognition, which is always a good thing also. Um, business, our rental rates, we did increase our rental rates 10%. We looked into that. I studied some rental rates of other retirement communities in the state of Oklahoma. It's really difficult to find a freestanding independent living these days, especially in a rural setting. When you go outside of the city <coughs> limits or a, a, metrop a metropolitan area or larger cities like Enid, it's really, really hard to find freestanding independent living. So in some way, I guess we're forging a path, but that's not always a good thing when you're trying to figure out where you fit. Um, but we did find a couple. A lot of them are a little bit closer to cities in Enid. We're having to count Enid as a little bit more of a rural area when we go into comparison rates on that. Um, but looking at our at our costs and everything and the way that breaks out, we decided that it was probably for the, ben the best benefit of the homestead to increase rates by 10%. Um, however, we didn't want to increase rates without taking, with, and we certainly didn't want to take away services from our residents. That was one of our primary goals in the beginning of this agreement, was that we were dedicated to not removing any services from our residents. And, but at the same time, we had to cut costs and increase income. So that's been a little bit of a challenge, but I think it's one that I can safely say we're meeting um, slowly but surely. But the 10% increase comes along. They have been paying their own personal cable, which is about a $60 a month expense. And we're able to buy that cable from uh, Sudden Link in a bulk package at a lower rate. So we're including that cable now. Um, we can't line item that, obviously, the FCC regulates and we can't sell cable, but we can include that in our package. So we're offering that as a service. So the rent has gone up 10%, but as soon as suddenly gets everything switched over and, and gets everything up and running, the residents will no longer have to pay their own cable. So that's kind of a benefit also on their side of things. And just as a comparison, uh, one bedroom apartment has been $1,200. Uh, that obviously is a $120 a month increase but when they no longer have to pay their $60 cable bill, effectively their expenses only go up $60 a month. So, and even at, even at $1,320 now, that's still a really good bargain when you put pencil to paper and, and that includes all of your services and all of your utilities and meals. So we still believe that we're very competitive in the market and certainly in this area. Uh, but we're, our main goal in raising that was to make the homestead more financially stable. Uh, the dietary manager and I are working on a new program that we will begin offering hopefully either in April or May uh, for the dietary services. We're working on a, a full-on wellness program. We've got our Arthritis Foundation exercise uh, class meeting three times a week now with, with instructor-led training. Uh, that's helped a lot of people. It's, we're going to try to open that up to the public a little bit to bring people in and also expose them to the community and, and let them see what we have to offer. Um, but that's, you know, the physical side of it, we do have some church services going there, so we've got the spiritual side of it, uh, the wellness program, and we're really looking now at implementing the dietary healthy options side of it. Um, currently, we have a two, our meals have two options on each meal. We're planning to change that to where they still have one daily special, but they have a small menu of always available items that are healthier options. Most of our residents like the meat and potatoes, but some of them like a little healthier options on the side. So we're going to try to accommodate that for that, but in doing so, we'll cut out a lot of really, really expensive food waste. So we're looking to save money in that, that respect as well. Uh, maintenance, we've experienced what appears to be the end of usable lifespan of a lot of our kitchen equipment. Unfortunately, in the last month, um, one of our, or the last two months, one of our main refrigerators went down. Uh, one of our ovens, our proofer, our ice machine, and the dish machine have all kind of gone kaput. Those have been mostly repaired. Now we're waiting. The only one we've really got to do left is the dish machine, and it's still crippling along it. But we, I've got some bids on that that I've talked to Joe Don about. I'll continue to visit with him about that um, to get that replaced. Um, and the first impression of any facility, any community that you go to, uh, you can hop on the internet and look around at retirement communities. Um, I encourage people, if you're interested in that, to go look at retirement communities in other towns. Um, 
two things really sell somebody initially on a facility, and that's food and looks, or and actually food and looks in either order. One of the two are first, but they, one of those two are one of the in, in, instigating and citing factors and citing where you're going to take somebody or where you're going to move. It's the food and looks that decide that. The homestead has good food. We're good in that area. And we had good looks 15 years ago. Unfortunately, over the years, that's kind of gotten a little bit tired and faded. The furniture's a little bit out of date now. So we're looking at um, getting a program together to get some of that replaced. I've, uh, we set up through the Foundation of Share Medical Center uh, an account where we can accept private donations, hopefully to get some of that coming in. I've also visited briefly uh, just an initial conversation with Joe Dawn about maybe seeing about getting the lobby painted. It's never been painted in 15 years. It's had some patchwork done. And the paint doesn't quite match up. So just getting that, that first impression for when people walk in to be as impressive as it has been. Um, that's something we're really interested in doing. Myself and the administrative assistant have painted the administrative office space, the entryway, and a couple of different apartments. So we're working on getting that kind of picked back up and looking good. Whenever, whenever the decision was made to furnish some more apartments for, to accommodate for more people in furnished apartments, a lot of furniture from the common areas disappeared into apartments, and that left some kind of echoing open gaps in the hallways and stuff. So we're trying to pull stuff back in to fill that up and make it look good. Um, I think that's all. If, any, if anybody from the public does want to donate to that, we've got that set up and it's pretty much ready to go on that fund. So if you hear of anybody who wants to donate to the public we're now able to accept those funds to do that. That's all I have. Any questions? Comments? Thanks, Cody.